Hey guys, welcome to Think Harder Politics. Today we have some amazing news analysis that shows that why the polls are so wrong and why Andrew Yang can win the whole thing, even without the debate. We know that he did not make it to the debate stage, but that's no problem. At this point, data show that the debates are basically not a major factor. So let's see what Crystal Ball and um, Saga um, interviewing um, Seth Cohen talking about these. And I'm going to offer my comment as well. Even though the stage is set for tonight, presidential hopeful Andrew Yang is still calling for a place in those primary debates. He says Americans want him to participate, even though voters haven't yet committed to voting for him. So here to talk about this and the Yang campaign is Seth Cohen. He's co-founder of Humanity Forward and the South Carolina Yang Gang. He joins us now by Skype. It's great to see you, Seth. How are you? Very well. Great to see you. It's uh, Lots has changed since last I've been here. <laughs> That's right. So Seth, changed- Last 10 days. Yeah, Seth, you are down uh, in Des Moines right now. Can you just tell us a little bit about the Yang strategy in the state of Iowa, despite the fact that he won't be on that debate stage tonight? Uh, Well, I can't speak to HQ's strategy. I run an independent expenditure committee. But our strategy, we know what works, and what works is direct voter contact. So we have spent uh, the last 10 days driving hundreds and hundreds of Yang supporters into Iowa. We've trained them up, and we have them out in the streets talking to people because that's what moves the needle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's the reception that people generally get when they're talking about um, Yang's message? How do you coach people to to broach the subject and to talk about uh, the Freedom Dividend in particular? Well, it's about telling a personal story, right? We all uh, have family members, we all have friends, and ourselves, we each have a personal story, and the Freedom Dividend would ha- help literally everyone. Um, so we, we coach people up to tell their personal story, and then talk about what it would do for the group, and then what it would do for the whole country. Mm-hmm. That's really important. I mean, talking to people in person, and sharing personal experiences, um, that's the key. And that's very, very different from watching the reality TV show at home, right? Just watching these people, you know, (laughs) talking over each other and destroying each other. That's totally different. I mean, these messages that when you talk to people in person in Iowa, that's what really matters, okay? So the Yang warriors um, have been all over the places in Iowa who have seen... Um, people like Paget Khaki and, you know, all these Yang Gang, right? Kai Wan and, you know, just amazing. Um, so that's what really makes the difference. Seth, how much of a blow do you think it is that Andrew Yang won't be up on the debate stage tonight? And uh, what, what are some of the recourse to that you guys are thinking? I mean, when you talk to voters, how have they become familiarized with Andrew Yang? Is it through the debates? Was that a very really critical vehicle for him? What do you think? It's vo- uh, direct voter contact. It's talking mm-hmm. to people in the streets. Uh, we're not too concerned about the debate. Uh, it's a reality show, and it really is not uh, representative of what the American people care about or you're thinking about. I'm here in Iowa, I talk to the Uber drivers, I talk to the restaurant uh, workers, and they're all really, really excited about Andrew. Um, once they f- people find out about Andrew, it's very contagious, and very quickly he's turning, uh, turning curiosity into committed caucus goers. Yeah. Okay, so that's really true. So um, the debates are just reality TV shows. And look at the data. How many people actually tuned in the debates? Okay, so I think the the previous debates, all the previous debates, each one probably has about, um, I would say, 8 million people watching on TV. And um, yeah, that's, that's about it. And uh, the last one in December is even less because um, probably people were traveling or something. Um, it's December. And um, if you look at the YouTube views, uh, if you search for a Democratic Debate 2019, um, this is, uh, you know, uh, listed by the number of views. And you see the most number of views 
goes to uh, Democratic Bay uh, Code Open Saturday Night Live, um, 14 million, and you have all these other reality TV shows that has millions of views, but not the actual debates until um, this one. This one is uh, ABC News Democratic Debate. Um, the full debate it has 4.1 million views. That's four months ago. So that speaks of how many people watch these debates. And this one, 4.1 million. And 3.8 million. Um, yeah, so... And the last one, the PBS, uh, uh, in December, it only has like one... 1.1 million. That's what last time I checked. So, so basically, we have about 10 million people watching these debates. So, if you divide it by uh, 300 million people in the United States, I mean, remember all these views could also some views could could, could be from outside of America. Okay, so we basically have, you know, 10 over 300. So that's like. Um, that's like 1 over 30, that's 3%, 3 percent, 3.3 percent of people watching the debates. So that's why it's not so such an important factor. And in fact, I expect the, the views, the number of views will be even less without Andrew Yan tonight. Um, <laughs> so, so um, and it, it's actually better in a sense that Andrew Yan could spend more time on the ground with people. And if you recall, the Tulsi Gabbard actually um, boycotted the debate and saying last time, even if she was qualified, you know, she would not attend it. She would even want to, you know, just spend more time on the ground with real people. One of the things we've been talking about here on the show is that the media's obsession with impeachment has caused them to spend their money and their resources and their time and attention there rather than commissioning more polls that could have allowed Andrew or other candidates to potentially make the stage. I mean, do you think that that focus on impeachment over the presidential primary campaigns has hurt Andrew? Uh, well, there's been over 20 polls uh, since the last debate that has Andrew at 5% or more. And that includes one by the Des Moines Register, which is literally hosting tonight's debate. Um, we're not concerned with Donald Trump. We're not concerned with impeachment. We're concerned with moving this country forward. And to do that, we need to get our guy to the White House. Mm -hmm. And so, Seth, what is the uh, what is the strategy in Iowa? Because I'm not sure if you're aware, but there's actually a rule that you have to hit 15 percent in every precinct in order to maintain viability. Are you seeing can, are you seeing viability in order to actually get Andrew Yang to a 15 percent threshold? I am. Again, when yeah. you hit the ground here and you talk to the people here, it's a very different story than what the national media is saying. The mm -hmm. strategy is to get out there and talk to everyone. I'm hearing, I mean, just go on Twitter. You'll see the Yang Gang talking about being out in rural parts of this state. And these people are telling them no one's knocked on their door in numerous cycles. And sometimes mm -hmm. politics just showing up is the most important thing, especially when you have a message as powerful as Andrew's. I, guess I mean, so. yep. So actually, uh, the there there are polling numbers showing uh, why this is true, um, why Andrew Yang can actually win Iowa. So this is a poll, online poll, uh, for Andrew Yang supporters. How did you register a vote in 2016? So um, you see that uh, only 24 percent of them voted Democrat. Okay, and 32 um, percent was not even registered and did not vote. And 24% voted independent or Republican. There are also 11% um, who registered independent um, or Republican and did not vote. And there are also 8.7% that registered uh, Democrat but did not vote. Okay, so essentially, only 20% of them voted Democrat. <laughs> so if you do the math, right? That's so that's like one fourth, one fourth of Andrew Yang's supporters voted Democrat. And they are polling Democrat voters right now. And if the poll shows Andrew has 5% in Iowa and, and nationally, and that means it's 5 over, uh, 5 divided by 1 fourth or 24%. So that's approximately 20%. So Andrew Yang should be polling 20% if these um, people who did not register, did not vote uh, Republican, uh, do not vote Democrat 
actually showed up in Iowa caucus. That is the math. That's why he will win the whole thing. He can definitely win the whole thing. Um, that's. I hope that's exciting and uh, convincing to you. Okay, let's finish up this very quick. This is a similar case that the, the Sanders team makes as well, that they're bringing in infrequent voters, people who aren't necessarily showing up in the likely voter models. So they believe that their support is underestimated in the polls. Do you believe that as well? Do you have reason to believe that some of these polls are underestimating Andrew's support? I have very good reason to believe. I mean, we're talking about uh, first time voters, independents, uh, anti-Trump Republicans. These are three of uh, Andrew's biggest groups of supporters, and none of them are being polled. Hmm. Well, very interesting, Seth. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate your insight. Uh, my pleasure. Go to uh, humanityforward.org to find out more. There you go. Thank you very much. And we'll have more rising for you after this. So I know we outperform expectations. And essentially anything I do is going to outperform expectations. Because people are still like, yeah, yeah, it's like, oh. So I go in there and I beat like a couple of credible candidates. It's like, oh, I was OK. I come here to New Hampshire and we shock the world. Because New Hampshire, New Hampshire is an open primary. Anyone can vote in the Democratic primary. So if you are a Republican, who are you going to participate in? Donald Trump stopping William Weld? Or the Democratic race, which is much more interesting. You're going to come over, you vote for Andrew Yang. Every, every poll is underestimating our support because the polls are just talking to registered Democrats. How many of you all are not registered Democrats? That's what I'm talking about. If you guys vote, they don't see you coming. That's a beautiful thing. So then we shocked the world in New Hampshire, and the world is like, what just happened? Andrew Yang just did what in New Hampshire? And then we go to Nevada, where we're very strong. And that's South Carolina, and that's Super Tuesday. I guess we're up to the White House. Now, this is at your question. Exactly. So we have, you know, 5% among Democrat voters, and then uh, we have independents, um, you know, first-time voters, and um, Trump voters, right? So those would account for another... 15%. So Andrew Yang will actually have approximately 20%, if not more. Um, that's why he can actually win. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, the news analysis. And um, please like and subscribe and share and comment below.